having discussions with my father. But uh, in fact, I don't think there's anything. I went to UC uh, Berkeley, uh, but certainly there was nothing in my educational experience that helped me in the job market. I could have done everything that I did uh, without uh, going to college. Um, and you know, when people send resumes to me to work, and I get resumes all the time, I couldn't care less whether or not they went to college. Uh, I care what they've done, uh, you know, what their work experience is, uh, not uh, not where they went to college. And you know, the, the gentleman who just spoke, you know, mentioned about remedial education here at Temple or other universities. Look, if, if you if you've gone to four years of high school and you still need remedial education, you got no business being in college. I mean, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your money. You know, in before this before the Second World War, um, you know, before the GI Bill, only about 10% of high school graduates even went to college. 10%. That means 90% of Americans that graduated high school, not everybody graduated high school, but even 90% of those who graduated high school did not go to college. But I would bet that the typical high school graduate in 1945 had a much better education than the typical college graduate today. And what, what did the typical high school graduate do in 1945 when he was 18 years old? He went out and got a job, and probably by 25 he was married. And he can afford to support his wife. His wife didn't work. I mean, she might have worked in the house, but she didn't have a job. And he probably could have four kids. And he didn't have any credit cards. And he was able to save for his retirement. Do all that with a high school degree. And a lot of people did all that without a high school degree. Today, you have people staying in college. And now, as you said, sometimes it takes five or six years just to get a bachelor's degree. So people are in college with 22, 24. And probably the majority of people who graduate college graduate with degrees that are completely worthless, that mean nothing. They can do the jobs that they're doing without those degrees. And in fact, in many cases, it's 40 years or six years of wasted time. And maybe it's fun. I mean, I had a lot of fun when I went to Berkeley. I mean, I, you know, I went to parties. You know, I met a lot of girls. Um, but I mean, I don't think it was worth all that money. But people are wasting. This is time where people can be developing skills. The, the, the guy before me, I forget his name, talked about how much money plumbers are making. Imagine if a lot of people who are spending four to six years you know, in a university wasting their time. What if they learned to trade? What if they learned how to be a plumber? And then, you know, and, and, and then you know, they, they can use those years more productively or gaining valuable work experience, not, 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 not being in university. But here's the problem. The question is, why are so many people going to college today? And why does it cost so much? I mean, that's the problem. Right? Well, the reason is the government. The reason, you know, if you're mad in this room, how many people here are mad that the, the tuition might go up? Right? So the rest of you don't care? <laughs> <laughs> but, right, how many people are going to this university right now and getting some sort of government grant, the federal government, whether it's a, a scholarship, direct aid, or a guaranteed student loan? How many people? Okay, now keep your hands up high. Now, if you would, if, if, how many people, just bring your hand down now. No, no, keep your hands up. <laughs> now, okay, I'll tell you when to bring it down. How many people, if you lost all those government grants and, and loans, how many people would still be going to college? Well, not that many. So, so the rest of you would still find a way to pay for it? Well, the reality is there are a number of you who wouldn't be here. And that is the problem. What happens is the government is subsidizing a college education. And because the government is subsidizing it, it's more expensive. See, what happens with the subsidy is universities like Temple, but also the speaker before me talked about that we need to cut costs, that Temple needs to adopt technologies and do things to reduce costs. Well, they're not going to do that. And why should they do that? Because no matter what they charge, the students are still going to come. And why is that? Because the government will give them the money. And that is the problem. There is no free market at work in education. Colleges should be less expensive today than it was 20 years ago, 50 years ago. I mean, imagine a university 50 years ago with no computers. I mean, 50 years ago, they didn't even have um, carbon, carbon paper or copy machines. I mean, how did they keep track of everything? They had to have little index cards. And, I mean, it, it should be so much cheaper now to educate people. Especially with the internet and all the it, 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 it should be an afterthought how cheap college should be. You know, when my father went to college, he went after the Second World War. He didn't qualify for the GI Bill because he actually went to college before he went to the Army. He went to Korea, but he went to college uh, before the Korean War, basically, after the Second World War. And his parents didn't have any money, so he went to college. 
How did he go? He, he had a summer job waiting table. And that was it. And he graduated. And a lot of his friends worked their way through college. And that was very common. I mean, people here you know, are too young to remember that, but ask their parents. I mean, I'm working my way through college was very, a very familiar thing for students to do. If you didn't have the money to go, you worked. And it wasn't a full-time job. He had a summer job waiting tables. And not only could he pay for tuition, he paid for room and board in his books. And he graduated with no debt. But what's the difference between then and now? Well, back then there was no government aid. Now there is. And so now, students can get all the money they want to go to college. And so the universities know this. So every year they raise prices. And you can go back, and I did this once, I wrote an article, and I looked at Harvard uh, tuitions. And you go back uh, to the 1800s and 1900s, and you can see periods of time, 40, 50 years, where the tuition doesn't even change. It's exactly the same. It isn't until the government really gets involved in, in education, and then, then you start to see the prices exploding. And it's no different with everything else. I mean, look, look where the government is involved. They're involved in health care. They subsidize health care. Well, look at the price of health care. It's going up. Right? They got involved in housing by subsidizing mortgages. What happened to housing prices? Wherever the government is involved, prices go up. Look where the government is not involved. Computers, television sets, uh, cell phones. What happens there? The prices go down. right? Because the government's not involved. The free market is involved. You have market forces being bringing down prices. You know, during 2008, when we had that big market collapse, Everything went down. The price of everything went down in 2008, except education and health care. Colleges actually raised their tuition in 2008. You know, why? Well, because of the government. Have you ever seen a university have a sale? Do they ever say, hey, we get 20% off on, uh, on tuition? No. Why have a sale? Well, what do you think would happen if the government said no more grants, no more student loans? None. What would happen? Well, a lot of people would decide, I can't go to college. It's too expensive. The universities would all of a sudden be looking at empty classrooms. Now, what would they do? Would they shut down? No. They would find ways to cut costs. There are a lot of ways, just like an airline. What does an airline do when they have empty planes? They have a sale on prices, and then more people decide to fly. So that's what's going to happen if the government, if you really are worried about high tuitions, you've got, you got to go up to Obama and say, abolish all government aid to education. Get rid of the Department of Education. Get rid of all subsidies, all guaranteed student loans, so that tuitions will come down. See, right now we have this gigantic racket in public education, where the beneficiaries are not the students, but the universities, the educational bureaucracy that is sucking all this money out. The kids just graduate with a bunch of debt. All the money goes to the colleges and universities, and they keep kids in school. We have far too many people in school. I mean, most people, also, if you take away a lot of these government grants, a lot of people just won't go to college. And so that will reduce the demand for college education. And if you reduce the demand, the price is going to come down. See, the government has artificially stimulated demand. Everybody has the idea that they got to go to college. Everybody doesn't have to go to college. I mean, if you want to be a doctor, or there's a few things, you need to go to college. But the vast majority of people who are going to college are going to get jobs that don't require degrees. And in fact, most of the stuff that people are learning, a lot of people graduate with a liberal arts degree. I mean, just, they should abolish all that. What do you need it for? I mean, if you want to learn liberal arts, read books. Just go on the internet. In fact, you know, I'm sure if you're interested in some of these courses, you can come to Temple and audit the classes, just sit in the back. No one's going to kick you out. You know, what do you actually need to pay the tuition for? What do you need to do for? You know, we actually have a bubble now, I think, in, in education. You know, where we had a bubble, we had a bubble in the stock market, we had a bubble in, in the housing market. There's a bubble in education. A college degree is not worth the price that you pay for it. Absolutely. The present value, if you take all the money that you're going to pay, and if you take out these student loans, I mean, part of it, I had a young lady on my radio show who I guess made some noise she got on television because she, she set up a website to try to retire her student debt. She borrowed $190,000 to get a four-year degree in liberal arts. And she, she majored in uh, sociology. Right? What are you going to do with a sociology degree? I mean, all you can do is teach sociology. Other than that, it's worthless. <laughs> and she borrowed $190,000 to get this degree. Now she's stuck. She can't afford to work. She's living at home. My advice to her was to leave the country and start over again. <laughs> because you can't even get 
out the money. You can't even declare bankruptcy. I mean, this girl was 18, 19 years old when she made these stupid decisions. She, and now, I asked her, do you regret the, the fact that you spent all this money? Yes. I said, Didn't you, do, do you wish that you couldn't borrow this money and maybe you would have skipped college and went to a cheaper university and lived at home? Oh, absolutely. But she made these stupid decisions because the government dangled all this money in front of her. And said, so don't, don't worry. Pay whatever it costs. You know, and, you know, she didn't care. She was too young uh, to know the difference. So when you're 18 or 19, what do you know? You don't, even have any, you don't even have any conception about how much money this is and how difficult it is to pay it back. It's like you graduate with a mortgage, but you don't have a house. And it's not like a normal mortgage. You can't walk away from it. You can't mail the keys into the bank. You're stuck. So if we get the government out of education, the prices will come down. And yes, fewer people will go to college. Why does everybody have to go to college? And it's more important, why aren't we educating kids in elementary school or in high school? Again, because the whole thing is just to keep them in this system, keep people in the educational system, so that the universities and the, the colleges or the elementary schools can feed off of this money. Meanwhile, where's all the money coming from? You know, when the government guarantees a student loan, where did that money come from? 